All right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Devin from Deadly Art Gaming. For those coming for the first time, welcome. For those coming back, welcome back. Uh, today is going to be the third video of the skills breakdown series for the rogue class, or well, now we're on the marksman. Uh, so we're going to go over the skills, kind of through all the nodes, kind of read them out, kind of give uh, kind of brief overview of all of it, so that. If you don't want to read them, you can get a description of them and all that fun stuff. Or if you're looking at kind of varieties of how to do things. So um, I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please smash that like button. Definitely helps the channel and I appreciate it very much. Uh, also, if you want to keep no get notified whenever I bring out new content via my live streams, my guides, my reviews, all that fun stuff, smash that subscribe button. I uh, definitely appreciate it. And also, the link to our Discord is down below. Come join us. Uh, chit chat with everybody. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, once the multiplayer comes out, we I will be playing with my community, uh, going over that. Uh, and we do, I do play other games as well. So if you have other games, if I happen to have it, I'll be more happy to play with you. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we've got the multi shot, which, like I said, it pairs up with the flurry. Uh, so you can spec out both of them and just use that, which is a lot of, there's a lot of builds that do that or cast it separately or cast just multiplayer, multi-shot or whichever. Uh, this will increase the damage, the cone, uh, decrease the cone width, uh, and give you a max of only three projectiles. Uh, over here is for mana efficiency, um, hit damage, but slower attack speed. Uh, knockback chance, so you can have a chance of pushing them back, kind of like the bows on uh, D2. Um, armor shred chance, auto fire chance on bow attack. Uh, uh, so essentially, uh, multi shot has a chance to be shot when you use another bow attack. Um, it increases the chance to stun, but it also increases significantly more mana. Um, over here is going to be attack speed and chance to gain haste. Um, and then uh, over here is going to be hit damage to close target, 25%. Uh, less hit damage to far away, um, negative 25%. So the closer you are, the more damage you're going to do. Uh, double shot every eight attacks. Uh, fewer attacks between double shots, so this will be every eight. If you put two points into here, it'll be every four shots, it'll double shot. Um, uh, over here, we're going to have attack speed, uh, pierce chance, and then crit chance, crit multiplier damage per point so multi shot deals more damage if you haven't moved in the past second so if you're standing still uh, you can do more damage uh, haste chance from standing still uh, this will be extra arrows but cost more mana um, I think we got it up to with the bow and everything up to like 17 arrows I think it is if I remember correctly um, Projectiles can hit the same target, so if they're close enough to you and you're casting 17, there's going to be multiple arrows that's going to hit them, uh, and then increase the stun chance, uh, but the overall damage is decreased. So it's kind of a trade-off there. If you're hitting everybody with one arrow, you're not going to do a lot of damage, but if you're hitting them with multiple arrows, it could be beneficial, especially on bosses or if you're up close and personal where you can get enough arrows in there. Um, and then you can make it to where they shoot wider, which wouldn't be ideal if you're going to be trying to do something like that. Uh, this note here will be for a poison chance, but cannot slow. Uh, hit damage to slow targets, so if they're slowed, you do more damage. Uh, damage and projectile speed, slow chance, slow duration and bleed duration, and slow chill duration reset chance. 10% so you have a chance of resetting their durations and then last but not least uh, free went out of mana maximum projectiles plus one or is one so you can only shoot one 
which kind of defeats the purpose of multi-shot. Um, uh, like I said, that is uh, when you are out of mana, is free to use, so you can use it as much as you want, but you can only shoot one uh, uh, one arrow. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that would be... I haven't tried it, so don't quote me on this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that will be... You'll do multi-shot until you run out, of dam uh, run out of mana. As soon as you're using it at a free cost where you're out of mana, it will turn into one arrow. Um and then now it does state on there that other um, bonuses still apply. So all the uh, bonuses to the damage and stuff like that is still going to affect it. Uh, Dark Quiver is essentially a skill that you cast and it's going to summon arrows all around you um, that you actually have to pick up. So just casting skills not going to do anything to you but have arrows uh, come from the sky. Essentially, once you you have to go pick it up, and that next arrow that you shoot is going to have whatever bonuses you pick here. So you're going to have to keep moving around. Uh, you can set up to where it can constantly uh, be doing it for you as you're moving around, cast um, uh, shooting things. It'll it'll uh, have arrows call down to, without you having to cast the skills. So you can kind of set up that way. So. Um, Using a black arrow grants additional physical damage, uh, fly damage per, uh, armor shred chance, uh, enemies pierce plus two, um, cause your, and that's for the multi-shot. Uh, this is increased crit chance, uh, flurry base crit chance is increased, uh, so if you have an arrow, the next arrow you shoot from it will do increased damage. Uh, this is going to be uh, grant more damage, but consumes more mana. Um, Cinder Strike combo resets. Um, so essentially, if you have it at two or three, you can run over one and it will reset your combo for you. Uh, this will give you, um, like if you pick it up and you hit a mob uh, that's at 15% or less health, it'll automatically kill them for you. And then mana restored whenever you pick up an arrow um, using a black arrow consumes all active shadows to grant you your next bow attack more damage per shadow consumed consuming at least three shadows grant significantly more damage so essentially um, if you put five points into here so that's going to put you up to 25 percent um, uh, per point or uh, 25 percent increased damage and damage with that at least three shadows is that's going to bump you up to um uh 100 percent more damage then over here it's going to be uh grants more damage over time crimson shadow duration so picking up um uh, Black Arrow does grant you the Crimson Shadow, which gives you increased damage over time as well. Uh, bleed Chance and Fire uh, Physical Resistant Penetration. And then Poison Chance and Poison Resistant Penetration here. Uh, up here, we're going... Um, picking up Arrow grants a Shadow. Um, frenzy dur So picking up one does grant you uh, Frenzy Buff, which grants you a Attack speed and cast speed. Health gain when you pick one up. Uh, picking up a black arrow uh, grants active ballista additional bow physical damage while they are active or alive. Uh, so that would be four per point. So that would be up to uh, plus 20 damage. Um, black arrows. Uh, it gives active ballistas attack speed. Uh, that's 2% per, so that would be 10%. And then this one, uh, a buff. They have ballistas that have been buffed by at least four black arrows always critically strike. So if you pick up a bunch of arrows, they'll be buffed. But the only thing bad about that is that by the time you run around and grab four arrows, they're going to be close to timing out. So um, picking up black uh, arrow grants you a stack of dust shroud 
for the glancing blow and dodge rating. Uh, arrow on bow skill use chance 5%. And uh, this one is, uh, oh, this is the one that uh, allows your bow skills, just any of your bow skills to uh, call down an arrow for you. Uh, this one causes your next hail of arrow to deal increased damage. Uh, so crit chance, um, whatever your crit chance is um, converted to damage over time uh, at 200%. Uh, then over here we got the ar uh, arrow frequency but the duration is shorter uh, instant arrows so you instantly summon a number of black uh, black arrows on use the rest are spread out over the normal duration uh, so you have to put it at five points to have it immediately drop down five um, slow duration for the black arrow and then knockback chance uh, distance picking up a black arrow knocks back enemies uh, for meters. So if like they're, they're all chasing you down, you can grab one real quick and it'll do a knockback for you. Um, black arrows are summoned, but the arrows are summoned at the same frequency, causing dark quiver to have a longer duration. So you can increase duration. Um, this will increase your elemental damage. Um, for your next bow use, and this will change the cold to freeze multiplier rate by 40% 40, uh, 40 per point, lightning to shock chance, and fire to ignite chance. Um, and then black arrow causes your next detonating arrow to deal 100% uh, more area. Uh, hill of arrows, which is an uh, area of uh, arrows that come from the sky uh, essentially uh, let's see here this one will be more area initial barrage uh, but at a greater cost um, crit chance immobilize duration and slow duration dust route for the glancing blow and um, dodge um, Dust route to allies, duration, bow damage per second, and maximize, uh, maximum damage is up to 20%, so hail of, hail of arrows deals more damage over its duration, scaling up to a maximum. Um, this does not affect damaging elements. Uh, so up here we'll get into physical convert to poison and bleed convert to poison chance and then poison chance. Uh, more duration on uh, one active hail, uh, uh, hail of arrows lasts significantly longer but you can only have one hail of arrow active at a time so you'll have to wait until it stops before you can cast a new one. Uh, so if you cast it again, it'll automatically stop the first instant, and then you'll have to cast it again. Uh, this one has you turns it into a channel. Um, costs um, negative 40 mana from it starts out at 60, so it'd be 20 mana per second. Uh, and then uh, delay and increase delay um, negative 50% or 50% mana cost per second is 15 per second. Uh, so it's 20 to cast and then um, 15 to continue. Uh, slow chance, physical to cold, slow to chill, freeze rate, uh, freeze rate multiplier, chill duration, Mana cost negative 12% per point, uh, but lesser duration. Yeah, bleed chance, bow damage, and maximum damage. Uh, that's per bleed um, on the enemy. So the more bleed stacks you have, the more damage that you'll do. And then uh, advancing area, so now falls in a forward advancing rectangle area rather than a circle. So it slowly goes forward. 
Uh, down here we have additional plus two charges, but less uh, half the duration. Uh, this one will give you less mana cost and the cooldown duration is lower, but there's a bigger delay before, from when you cast it till it actually starts coming down. Uh, increased damage, uh, increased bow damage uh, to stun enemies. Uh, this will be increased damage, uh, but in a smaller area. Uh, blow, uh, bow health leech, so you'll le leech a portion of their damage. Physical converted to fire, bleed converted to ignite. Uh, this one will uh, increase your damage to ignited enemies. Critical void, uh, vulnerability chance. Uh, let's see here. Armor shred chance, frailty chance. Uh, and that is, oh yeah, I started up there. Uh, more area, initial barrage, so the now also shoots a barrage of arrows on use dealing bow damage, uh, but costs more mana, uh, immobilized duration, slow duration, and then crit chance. Uh, last but not least, detonate an arrow. arrow. Um, this is basically a lightning arrow that comes out and then you can fork it. Um, this will increase crit chance, uh, but reduce, uh, at a reduced arming time. So it'll have increased, but reduces the arming time, uh, for it to arm to do the explosion. Um, critical multiplier and critical vulnerability chance. Um, and then cone, uh, circle turns into a cone, so instead it will be kind of a wedge, uh, instead of a circle area around like an explosion, no arming time, so it'll be instant. Uh, lightning turns into fire conversion, shock turns into ignite. Um, over here for attack speed and shock duration. Um, Explosion caused lightning ten, uh, tendrils to chain out to nearby enemies, so this can go up to two, and then you can put four points into it to where uh, it can go out to eight additional enemies. Uh, and then it also, the tendrils will give you lightning resistance penetration and shock chance. Uh, this will give you... Um, Sucker Punch will... When you hit an enemy with an arrow that already has an arrow attached to them, the explosion deals more damage in a larger area. So essentially, if you hit them twice before the first one explodes, uh, you have a chance uh, it'll do even more damage. Now, it's not going to do two explosions. It'll still just do one. Uh, shock chance homing arrow to where they kind of will slightly try to seek them out. Don't expect it to do a U-turn. Um, this shock turns into poison. Explosion poison chance is 200%. Uh, explosion hit damage is negative 50. Uh, uh, no added bow damage. So this is mainly just kind of turning it into a ailment uh, damage uh, and elemental damage. Um, here will be deals more damage and has a larger arming time. The explosion deals more damage per second. The arrow spins arming, so 5% per point. Uh, increase arming time of 15%. Increase explosion damage uh, 15% per. Uh, over here you have explosion damage uh, per 5% health the enemy is missing. Uh, down here, explosion damage, uh, less ar explosion radius, so it's going to do more damage, but at a less lesser radius. Uh, maximum time charged and enemies pierced per uh, 0.5 seconds. So detonate and arrow uh, can now be charged up for up to two seconds, casting it to pierce a number of enemies. Uh, so essentially you can just pierce a couple more enemies and get some more out of it. 
Uh, and then damage per second charge, 25%. So if you do it up to two, that'll be 50% increased damage. Uh, and then down here, we'll lower the enemy's elemental resist, so up to 20%. Uh, more arming time, so that'll work with that. Uh, enemy movement speed, lightning converted to cold, shock to chill, and freeze rate, uh, and freeze rate multiplier. Um, so this will bring up the area, shock chance, uh, explosion hit damage um, is lower. Uh, down here is going to be current mana consumed, 5%, so essentially uh, consumes a portion of your current mana to deal more damage uh, equal to the mana consumed. So you're going to be able to do a little bit more damage uh, with the damage, that, uh, the mana that you're going to be drinking down. Uh, explosive damage, increase explosion area, uh, explodes immediately. Um, if the enemy has an attached detonating arrow and gets hit again, this will make it explode immediately. kind of works just like um, uh, this one, but this one just doesn't make it explode either. It does a bigger area and more damage. Uh, and then over here, the Nair does more damage and has a increased chance to stun, but now has a cooldown. So instead of you being able to just constantly shoot it at one after the other, it'll have a 5 second cooldown, but does 30% increased damage, 100% increased stun chance, and more explosion area, and then additional charge. Um, and I do think we are finally done. Those are all the rogue skills broken down, kind of gone through all the different nodes that are associated with them. Um, like I said, as far as that, I know with the Blade Dancer variant, a lot of people are using Cascade, Dagger, um, Flurry is a very popular one. Um, using Flurry, you can use uh, with Cascade, and then a lot of people are tossing one or the other of these two in there uh, and then using uh, Shadow Bomb. Um, also, Shurikens is very popular, is very fun. Like I said, I'm working on one right now and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, that would be mixed in like with mine. I would be using Shuriken, Smoke, um, Lethal Mirage, uh, Shadow Cascade. Um, not and shift of course so that'll be pretty much it there uh, but as far as marksman a lot of people are going flurry with mixed multi-shot for the aoe clear uh, and good a single target uh, there also is a few good builds with the hail of arrows um, and i've seen a couple being put out with the detonating arrow um, there is a couple, like I said, Ballista builds, but they're, like I said, they're going to be more beneficial for a group play rather than single target just because of the delay of putting them down before they actually start shooting and actually start killing stuff. So, um, definitely a fun class. I'm glad they finally got the Rogue out. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I hope y'all are enjoying it. All right, so that is it. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, just wanted to kind of go go through an uh, overview of all the skills uh, that completes the Rogue class through the Blade Dancer and the Marksman. I will be doing the Falconer uh, as soon as we get it out, uh, and that way I can I'll go through the skills as soon. I'll make another video for that once that class releases. Um, if you did like the content, please smash that like button. Uh, if you want to keep alerted whenever I make new content, new videos, live streams, all that fun stuff, smash that subscribe button so you're notified. Uh, also, Discord link down below. Come join us. Uh, love to have you. I'll play. I'm gonna be playing with my community as soon as we get multiplayer out. If you won't have other games that you looking for someone to come join you in, I'll be more than happy to join you if I have the game. Uh, other than that, my name is Devin from Deadly Art Gaming. You all have a great one. I'll see y'all next time.